Hello and welcome to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and today I'm going to do a tutorial video on how to add an additional hard drive to your Linux operating system. The Linux distribution I'm using today is CentOS version 5.5. It is the 64-bit edition. This operating system is based upon the Red Hat Enterprise Edition and this operating system CentOS is free to download at centos.org. So let's begin. In this tutorial video you're going to need two elements an extra hard drive and an application installed called Gparted. Um, to begin with, if you have an extra hard drive laying around or if you've uh, purchased one at a retail store, you need to add that hard drive to your server. Once it's been added, we need to install an application called Gparted. Gparted is a free application. If you watch my video on how to add an external USB hard drive or how to format an external USB hard drive in the Linux environment, I go into detail on in how to configure and install and use Gparted. So with that being said, we should be at the point now where you've added your additional hard drive and the add application is installed. Remember the pause button in these videos are your best friend. You can stop the video at any time to go back and catch up. Now that you've added the hard drive and you've installed Gparted, let's begin. Go to Applications, System Tools, Gparted Partition Editor. Right off the bat, it's going to bring up your primary hard drive. Let's drop it down and change it to the hard drive you've added. Now, I'm assuming the hard drive you've added has no format on it, or if it has a Windows format on it, what we need to do, we need to go under Device and create a partition table. And that's just warning you that if you have information on there, it's going to be erased. Hit Apply. And under the Unallocated area, click on New. Is a slide here where you can you know choose different sizes to partition your hard drive. I'm going to use the entire hard drive since it's so small. I'm going to use the ext3 option for file system and I'm going to call it storage. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just keeping it simple. Hit add. Hit apply. This will probably take about 10 seconds since the drive is so small. So now that the hard drive, the additional hard drive has been discovered and set up with a file format, we need to connect this hard drive to this operating system. You know, unlike uh, Windows, when you put it in, it'll mount it as a D drive or E drive or an Apple. You'll see just a big hard drive sitting right here. Or it does that in Ubuntu too. Um, in CentOS, it doesn't do that, at least not that I've discovered. Uh, the best method I like to use is to take this hard drive and mount it mount is a term they use in Unix to connect to a directory. So let's create a directory and let's call it, um, let me call it storage1. Here, very simple. The premise behind this is to connect this hard drive to this directory. So this directory is basically going to work as a gateway between your operating system and this hard drive. So when you do your backups you just want to point them to the directory you've created that way they get nice and tucked away on this additional hard drive. So if your operating system crashes, um, you, you'll feel comfortable knowing the fact that your important data, your documents, your videos, your databases are actually tucked away on another hard drive. All you have to do is reload the um, operating system, recreate the directory, and run the script that we're going to do here in a minute to reconnect the two. Okay, now let's do the script I just mentioned. We're going to do a shell script. It's very simple. I actually have it on my website. If you get a chance, go to the Jonas.net right here. Go to my search engine and just type in drive. And click on it. I put in a little text file. Here it is right here. This is another uh, little bit of code we'll be doing later. This right here is very simple. Exclamation point, or as they say, bang, forward slash, bin bash, mount. There's the hard drive and there's the folder it's going to connect to slide this out of the way and there is the hard drive SPD1 and there is the directory so right click on your desktop and go create new document empty file give it a name I'm just gonna call it drive and then open it with a text editor and we're just gonna add that simple command we just uh, talked about or I just talked about exclamation point in bash M O U N T. It's pretty straightforward the language. D V. The name of the drive is SDBU1. 
and the space, and we're going to connect it to storage one. So it's pretty pretty simple. We're going to mount SBD one to storage one, and that looks good. Save it. Colors change. It now becomes a shell script, and we're just going to go under properties, right click, go under properties, go under permissions. I usually leave this as read only and read only. If you don't check this, allow executing file as program. If you try to open it, it'll just open it with a text editor. You want to open it with terminal to actually run that command. So check that, close out of it. We'll just open this up real quick. You can see how it says 21 gig. We'll run the file real quick. Open, run in terminal. That's it, it just ran. And you're like, wow, nothing happened. Well, if you go under refresh, there it is. Change to 13.9. I don't know why it doesn't give the exact number. I've noticed that in pretty much every operating system I've ever used, no matter the platform. You buy a new hard drive or memory, it never quite gives you what it says in the box. I think it's something we've all learned to kind of accept. All right, so let's just create a directory and call it test. And um, that's it. This is now, this test folder is on this hard drive. Let's, let's refresh this real quick. Go under G part it and drop it down to our new hard drive. Let's just unmount it. Bam, it's gone. Now let's do a quick refresh. It's back to the old, the old directory again. And let's bring it back. See how simple that is? So it'll stay connected. The only time it'll disconnect is when you reboot this server and this script hasn't been ran yet, it's, it's not gonna be there. It's, it's just gonna come up like, um, you know, as being unmounted. I mean, it's just going to come up like this. It's just, when you reboot your server, it's just going to be like this. Nothing there. You need to run the script when it comes to desktop to reconnect it, and then you're good. It's a little bit of legwork, you know, a little bit of consuming, you know. I'm mean, going to have to be there, or someone's going to have to be there to run that script, because, you know, when you got your backups running that drive, if your backup drive isn't accessible to your backup solution, you know, your backups aren't going to get there. So, I mean, I don't know how often you reboot your server. I don't do mine very often, so it's very rare you probably have to do it. But if you're gone and accidentally reboots and, you know, you're sharing out from this directory to your users and they can't get to it, well, you know, you're going to have a problem. There's another method to, to where if it boots up, it automatically mounts it. It's a little more advanced method. That was the other bit of code I was talking about. So I'll show you how to do that. Go into computer, file system, go into the XE, the ETC folder. I know I'm going relatively quick here, but I'm limited on my time on this video. Open that up and we're gonna add this. I'm gonna add this verbiage, which is gonna be DEV slash SDB1. Tab it over. And let's do it S T O R A G E. You see where I'm going with this? Tab it over. It's going to need the, we're telling it it's the EXT uh, 3 uh, file format. Defaults 1 and 2. So basically, now when it reboots, if you use this method, uh, it'll reboot just fine, uh, providing you, know, you don't have any problem with your operating system, but it's not going to mount nothing. With this, during the boot process, it looks at the FSTAB directory, or I'm sorry, the extra X, the FSTAB file, and it'll run this command. It'll say, hey, we're going to mount SDB1 to storage1, and this is the file uh, format it's using, and the defaults. And that's great. So you're thinking to yourself, why would I even bother using the shell script? So if it reboots and automatically mounts it during the boot process, and everything's going to be nice and safe and accessible, this seems kind of uh, pointless. Well, the reason I brought up both methods is because if something happens to your hard drive where there's a file issue and for some reason during the boot process, it's not capable of, you know, attaching this directory to this folder, you're going to be in trouble. It might stall during the boot process and all of a sudden you're stuck in that boot screen and you can't even get your server up. You can't even get to your operating system. You know, you're going to be in a panic mode. If you're a little more advanced uh, Linux uh, administrator, you're going to know how to get in the command line and go in and just edit this file and get rid of the statement and get your system back up and then take a look at that hard drive. But if you're relatively new to Linux and you don't feel comfortable 
with this, I would definitely say do not use it. This is a more advanced configuration because if it does fail and your operating system doesn't boot up, you're going to have to go in and change that uh, comment, and that can be complicated. So I would recommend if you are this right here method is a lot easier. It just comes to boot, you run it, click on it, bam, it's mounted, you have access to your hard drive. So that's two methods, two ways of doing it. Um, I like both methods. I, I actually use the more complicated method, but for people that are relatively new to Linux, I definitely recommend using just the simple shell script to add your hard drive. And that's it. This whole thing is relatively simple. Just throwing them both out there for both ideas. Now, um, I'm going to do another tutorial video on how to do a backup solution for Zimbra. Zimbra is the open source mail, mail cl email collaboration system that I did two videos on. And the backup solution is going to be done to uh, an additional hard drive. That's kind of why I'm doing this video ahead of time. Um, I've seen a lot of good backup solutions to the open source edition of Zimbra out there. And a lot of people have come up with some great ideas. You know, like everybody else, I've kind of taken ideas from different forums and put my own spin on it. And I think I've come up with a pretty good idea on how to back up the uh, Zimbra environment and restore it when needed. And that video will be done in the near, very near future. If you got time, please stop by my website. Um, I have a forum on there. If you want to drop me a, drop me a line, comments, uh, ideas, they're all, they're all welcome. I have a forum up. If you want to join the forum and bounce ideas back and forth, feel free. So I just want to thank you once again for uh, watching my video here at thejonas.net. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much and have a nice day.